Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, we're going to look at uh, this concept of conditional probability. And uh, we'll start to look at this thing called the multiplication law. We'll sort of derive the multiplication law here. We're not going to use it uh, explicitly, but we'll see where it comes from. Uh, so the data that we're looking at, I've done a survey, an alumni association has done a survey to determine labor market outcomes for their recent graduates across these different fields, business, science, and arts. And we wanted to know that you obtain full-time or part-time employment upon graduation. So here in this data set, I've got, uh, for example, here I have 23 business students obtained full-time employment, 46 obtained part-time employment. Uh, arts, 51 full-time employment, 13 part-time employment. So we've got the different combinations of field of study and employment status. And then over here, we have the total number of full-time, total number of part-time, total number of business, science, and art students. So we've got here all, a, a cross-tabulation of, of the relevant data uh, that we can now use to put together this joint probability table. So what I'm going to do for the joint probability table, I've, I've got, as you can see here, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit, I've produced... Uh, two side-by-side -side tables and the reason being is that I want to focus a little bit on the notation that is used I, f I find you know for the most part this is the first time that a lot of students are exposed to the the notation that is used in probability analysis and so that can be somewhat tedious uh, to deal with so I've got two tables this one will be our joint probability table oops probability so everything we put into that left table, that will be our solution for part A. Over here, this is just going to be a table of notation, just so that you can sort of connect the dots between what numbers correspond to what notation. So before I actually fill in the numbers, let's go through the notation first. So what we're going to have in, in this, well, in this space here, this is going to be the probability that a randomly selected student, randomly selected graduate, uh, is a, a business student who obtained full-time employment, right? So that, that's the cell that corresponds to a business student and full-time employment. So this is going to be the probability that it's a full-time student intersection business. Okay, so everything sort of within that table, excluding the totals, within that table, those are all uh, the intersections. So this one is going to be the intersection of full-time science. This one is the intersection full-time arts. This one is the intersection of part-time business. Here's the intersection of part-time and science. And finally, here's the intersection of part-time uh, arts. So those are all uh, the intersections of these two events. Okay. Now, the marginal probabilities are those things that are going to go here and here. Those marginal probabilities, well, those are just in this case, that's the probability that a randomly selected graduate is uh, obtained full-time employment. Over here, this is the probability that a randomly selected graduate has part-time employment. Down here, probability of drawing at random a business student, a science student, or an art student. That last corner, we don't really care what that is, that's always going to equal to one. Uh, nothing interesting there. So. So here we have all of our, our, our notations, and this is going to make more sense. Hopefully it will help uh, when we put together our calculations for conditional probabilities, because we're going to need um, a few of these different entries. So let's, let's go ahead now and calculate our, our joint probability. So for the first one, the probability that a randomly selected student, graduate, is a business student who obtained full-time uh, employment. So here I have 23 out of 193 students that meet that criteria. So the probability that I select one at random, 
So here we're calculating, I'm not going to write these down for all of them, but here we're calculating that intersection of full-time business. I have 23 that meet that criteria out of the 193. So that probability is going to be, let's get the calculator somewhere else, 23 divided by 193. So that's a probability, let's round that to uh, 12. 0.12 okay so that's the intersection the probability that a randomly drawn student is both a full-time business student okay so we can let's, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of them for all of these calculations I'm going to be using uh, let me color code these so all of these black circles that I'm going to uh, I'm going to use first those are all going to be those intersections. They are all going to be divided by this same denominator. So all of the calculations are going to be done with 193 as the denominator because that's our total number of students. Okay, so let, let me uh, oops, let me move this over. So let's continue on the full-time category. So the next is science. I have 42 science students. Uh, out of the 193, that's full-time science students. That's 0.22. Oh, let's keep uh, keep our colors here. So that's 0 0.22. Next, I have 51 art students who obtain full-time employment. Out of 193, that's 0.26. Okay, and let's uh, continue on with the joint probability. So I'm going to move down to the part-time row. So that's 46 business students obtain part-time employment out of 193. So that's 0.24. Uh, part-time science. So that's 18 out of 193. So that's 0.09. And finally, the arts part-time, 13 out of 193, and that's 0.07. Okay, so there we have all of the intersections of these two events, right? Uh, field of study and uh, employment status, full-time or part-time. Now we can get the, the marginal probabilities. And so now as numerators, I'm gonna be using these values and these values still the denominator is going to be that 193. So let me uh, write down for the first one. So if I'm looking at the, the probability that a randomly drawn student will be a business student, so this is probability of business, this is going to be 69 over uh, 193, and 69 divided by 193 is 0.36 and let's just move along that row so now the probability of randomly selecting a science student is 60 out of 193 so 0.31 and randomly selecting an art student would be 64 out of 193 0.33 And then we can do the same thing now on the um, full-time and part-time status. So here I'll write out the first one. So this is going to be probability of full-time employment. 116 divided by always 193. So 116 divided by 193. So that's 60% or 0.6 I should say. And I know that the next one, these all have to add to 1, so I know the next one is going to be 0.4, because all of these values down this row, uh, sorry, down that column, will add to 1, and everything along this row will add to 1. So this is just going to be 1, nothing interesting to, to extract from that piece of information. Okay, so now we have our joint probability table. Uh, we've responded to part A. 
Part B, interpret the marginal probability. So what do those probabilities mean? Essentially, if all it means is that if, if I reach in at random and I pull out an, in, an individual, uh, there's a 0.6 probability, or you can say a 60% chance uh, that I will randomly select uh, an individual who obtained full-time employment. Uh, or there's a 40% chance, a 0.4 probability, that I will randomly select somebody who obtained part-time employment. And the interpretation across the field of studies, exactly the same. A randomly selected person, this is a 0.36 probability or a 36% chance that I'll draw a business student or a 31% chance that I'll draw a science student, etc. Okay, so that's what these uh, marginal probabilities, those are the blue ones in the table, that's what those are telling us. So now we get into the interesting ones, finally. Uh, you know what, I'm actually going to do another video here because uh, this has already gone on for almost 10-11 minutes. Uh, and now part C, we're going to start to get into uh, some of the actually more tricky um, calculations. So let's, uh, let's end this video here and uh, I'm going to start up another one uh, right away. Okay, thanks for watching.